Good morning, Saints. I'm probably uh, not going to be very long today. We will see. You know, uh, sometimes when when preachers say that, they're going to be very long. Ah, yes, oh Lord. Praise God. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're starting a new campaign. Um, some of you who spoke with me yesterday and last week, I talked to you about the campaign that we're going to be starting involving uh, the uh, Souls Revival. And everyone is excited, everyone that I'm talking to, because, you know, uh, we have to be getting ready to win souls. I don't know if you've been noticing or not, but people's lives are in the balance, and we need to begin to, to win uh, souls for Christ. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, um, go to the book of Matthew, chapter um, 22. And uh, verse 4. I, I don't know if we're beginning verse 4. I have to look at it first. <laughs> Sometimes I like to begin um, and come up to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's begin in verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables. And said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. And he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and emphatic cattle are killed and all things are ready, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one, of, one to his own country farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. Mm. And when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, everybody say, look at this, go into the highways and many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did, not, did, who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many a call. But few are chosen. This morning I want to talk to all of those who are chosen. Come on. All of those who are called. Amen. Father, I thank you this morning for your plan. Father, I thank you, O oh Lord God, that we, we completely understand your, your plan this morning. And as you speak to us, O oh Lord God, concerning the banquet, Lord God, that we get a clear understanding of what it is that you wanted for the kingdom and that you wanted for the feast and that you wanted for the banquet. And Lord God, we do give you praise on it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you about being ready and readiness. That these, this campaign that we're about to do that will... We'll, we will involve an eight-hour prayer watch and, and I'm sorry, a 24-hour intercessory prayer that will require eight different time periods that will cause us to uh, 
will give us a spirit of readiness. It would cause us to be ready for what God is about to do. Readiness is a state of preparedness for future needs or happenings, whether predictable or uncertain. God, through Jesus Christ, prepared all that was necessary for the salvation of sinners. God's people are exhorted to be ready for warfare, physical and spiritual, death and the second coming of Jesus Christ. See, we may be ready for warfare, spiritual warfare, but we're not ready for physical warfare. We're not ready to die that was proven under the COVID virus that we're not ready to die. Come on. We're not ready. Many people are not ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. All humanity should be ready for future judgment. But I do want to go back because I always like to go back and I want to look at that script, those scriptures again in the book of uh, uh, Matthew 22. When Jesus spoke to them and gave them the parable about the kingdom. Because we need to be prepared for what is about to happen. We need to be prepared for revival. And getting prepared, we're going to be like the ones who were invited to the wedding. Because we have been invited to the wedding. Somebody say the church is, is, the, is the wedding. And he's coming for his bride. Come on somebody. He's coming for his bride. And in getting ready, we have to begin to gather those from the highways and the byways. And be ready to bring them into the house of God where they can be saved. Are you in here? Now, look at, uh, look at what Jesus said. He begins in this parable uh, in uh, verse number two. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. We know that that certain king was God. That son being Jesus Christ, our Lord. I love breaking down scripture like this. Because it is not useful to you if you do not understand. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because everybody who thought they understood the scripture, I need you to listen today. Watch this. He said, and he sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Because there have been many people and many are listening to me today. God has already called you to his service. You came to the altar. You accepted Jesus as Lord. And now you're God knows where. You're not where you're supposed to be. You're definitely not getting ready for the wedding. How many people know he's coming? Amen. He's coming. And, and these people, he's saying, these right here that were invited to the wedding, but they, they're not willing to come. So when we're talking about the soul's revival and inviting people to come, start with some new people. I'm going to get some amens. Where my amen corner at? Start with new people. Start with people you never invited before. Come on, somebody. Because, see, the, some of the people that you think, uh, well, this one will be easy, that one will be easy. Uh, you know, they're sitting at home right now. You've invited them a hundred times, and they still haven't come. That's just what he said. He said, some called those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. I even know people need to be willing to be in the house of God. So, again, he sent out other servants and said, Tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready come to the wedding. So Jesus is saying, listen, at this time, all things are ready. Everything is ready. Are you with me? Now, and they made light of it and went their way. There are many people right now are making light 
They say, hey, I got time. I got time. I don't have to come. I'll wait till I'm old. Uh, yeah, you mean that church thing? No, I really don't want to. They make light of it. It's not all that. It's not all that important. You've heard all the excuses? You've heard it. And they say, well, you know, I don't want to go. Jesus said they would. He said they would go their own way. It said that one to his own, uh, it said farm, and another to his business. They like, look, I got to work. I got some stuff that's more important to do today. They are more concerned with their process in the world than their eternal situation. Oh, you're in here. They are. I mean, and it's, it, the Bible said they would be. It's saying the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. Right now, I'm telling you, if you are a Christian in the United States, we are suffering persecution. They're saying, oh, you're one of those. You're one of those Christians who don't want me to have my way. So let's take you out and kill you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They seized them. And they treated them spitefully. They talk about them. And when the king heard about it, he was furious. Jesus mad? Yeah, he is. And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. And he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy. You think he, you think he right? Look around. You think he right? Come on, somebody. You talk back to me today. Amen. The better you talk, the more I'm going to get finished. Amen. Come on. Amen. He was right. He is right. They're not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways. He's saying, go get the people you least expect to come. Hmm? Maybe it is the one with the sign under the bridge. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the old lady that's in the house that's been waiting to come to church. Y'all not hear me, y'all. Maybe it's not the one that you think. Maybe it's the one with, with the children and they've been looking for a church home. Maybe it's them. He didn't tell you to be trying to figure out who it is. He said to go get them. Go get them. Now, he said, uh, and they went out. And when, they, when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man who didn't have on a wedding garment. You know what this is? This is somebody who made it in, who, who was standing in the church, who wasn't saved. You don't have a wedding garment on. You wasn't one of the ones that was chosen. You won one that was hidden in him before the foundation of the earth. So y'all here this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But each and every time though, I read about being ready. And I want to move, I want to move on to something else really quick because our time is almost gone. But any time that I read about being ready and being ready for the things of God. I read about the readiness for war. The readiness for war. Because, I don't know if you know it or not, but being in, in this Christian faith, this is a war mantle. You know, every time I, I hear the news, I hear, I hear things about uh, peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. I have to give you some... Uh, I have to give you some... Uh, uh, terms uh, that will line out our message uh, for this series. But um, as an intercessor, because if you're going to be a person of prayer and connect with us in prayer and, and, uh, and beat down the, the, the forces of evil, you've got to be a person that are equipped with three distinct qualities. Here's your three distinct qualities. 
Number one, uh, you need to be a person of passion. Amen. Number two, I'm going to give you the, the uh, definition of these in a moment. Number two, you need, to, you need to have a sense of urgency. You need to feel like that the re if you don't pray, something bad's going to happen. Amen. I'm serious. Because we don't have enough prayer people. We don't, we don't have enough people. You need to always feel like something bad is going to happen. Because something bad is going to happen if you don't pray. That's what a sense of urgency is. You need to have a calling. Or like the scriptures say, be chosen. You need to be chosen. And uh, guess what? All of us are chosen. All of us are chosen. Now listen. An intercessor... Here's your definition for intercessor. An intercessor is one that will appeal to God on behalf of another. This is why we need you. We need more people who will say, I will pray for others than I will pray for me. Are oh, you in here? Amen. There are lots of people who will pray for themselves, but there's very few people who will pray for others. An intercessor is a mediator. Someone who stands between the adversary, or uh, the enemy, warring in prayer on the behalf of someone else. Any ad, 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 mediators in the room? Amen. Any mediators in the room? One that will war. That will war until something happens. That will stay in the battle. I got one other man in the room this morning. They will stay in the battle until the, until the war is won. That's an intercessor. Amen. That's one that will fight the good fight. Then uh, you need to be one. If you are called to intercession, you need to be one who is passionate. Listen, you need to have that zeal, that fervor, that enthusiasm. The intensity, the eagerness. I tell you, you gotta go after you gotta go after that thing like you would a steak. You have to go after it like you would your favorite fried chicken. Come on now. You gotta be passionate about war for the people of God and staying on the assignment until the job is done. You've got to be one that is passionate about warring for the United States. I'm always talking about the nations because we need to war for our country. You can't be, you're not an intercessor if you just stand back and watch stuff happen and then watch, and watch things fall to the ground and you never said a prayer about it. What kind of intercessor is that? You got to have a calling or be chosen. Here's what that means, that you have a special call to minister to others' needs. You have a spe you are chosen to a special to a you're special for a church, a mission, a region, a city, a church. Uh, you're summoned. You have a strong urge. That's why you say many are called, but few are chosen. Chosen folks say, you know what? I'm chosen to do this job, and I can't I can't give up. I'm the one. If if I don't do it, then it won't get done that's chosen people the reason why one of the reasons why we're doing this until the beginning of the year and we're asking all of our prayer partners all of our intercessors all of the ones who are joining with me in CFC life all of our commission team members everyone at CFC USA we are asking all of us to join in the fight because God, they, I'm telling you, the wedding feast is ready. Listen, every single time I have seen the war, that intercessors have to be ready to war against Earth's enemies. Against Earth's enemies. Praying against weather anomalies, hurricanes, tornadoes. War against the nations. War against the cities. I think I'm going a little fast. But I'm just trying to get through one more point. 
today. We got a war against earth enemies. In Joel 3, verses 9 and 10, says, Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Prepare for war. Come on. I've never seen a warrior that didn't prepare for war who didn't prepare to win. Come on, we got to prepare to win. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Let them beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. So in every army, there are the strong and the weak. But the one thing that we have to do is prepare. So praying helps us to prepare for the warfare that we're going to face. And that um, the God always calls this morning, right before uh, when in our morning prayer, as I prayed, I, saw, I heard the Lord calling out to the mighty men, to the angels to the angelic forces, to those who are standing on every coast, in the north, the south, the east, and the west, is standing watch over the regions, who are standing, who are standing, waiting on the instruction of the Lord, blowing the show horns, blowing those, calling for war. That's why, that's what God is saying. He's saying, he's saying that, yeah, we're going to have peace, but not until we war in the spirit. We're going to have health again. We're going to have divine health again in the United States. But not until those who are called to the warfare begin to war. That's why we are praying for 90 days. Come on, somebody. So he said, proclaim this among the nations. Prepare the war. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up apostles and prophets. Wake up, intercessors and ministers. Wake up all those, ha, huh? yes, who are prepared for war. Draw near to God. Draw near. He says, let them come up. Beat your plowshares in the swords and your pruning hooks in the spears. Yes, 1 Kings 20 and 12. If you need these scriptures after church, I'll give them to you again. It says, and it happened when Ben-Hadad heard this message as he and the kings were drinking at the command post that he said to his servants, get ready. And they got ready to attack the city every single time that the Lord has dispatched his army and he needs to take back something. He will send forth his forces. But listen to me, saints, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And see, we have, to, we have to look at all of that, but against principalities and powers and rulers. And we're going to talk about Ephesians 6 next week in detail because we got to know how to war. Our, war, our, uh, our warfare is not carnal, but it is mighty and pulling down strongholds. So here's what I want you to take away today because our time is gone, believe it or not. Intercessors, we're going to be equipped, but I need the intercessors who are called to this mission to have passion, have a sense of urgency, and be chosen. Come on now. Amen. You got to have a calling. So you need to have a, ver a fervor, an enthusiasm, an intensity and eagerness. Have a special calling to minister to others, needs to a mission, church, region, or city. So Father, we thank you this morning. The Lord God indeed that you have called us. You have called us, O oh God, to war. That you have given us, O oh Lord God, the new campaign called the Souls Revival that will run Father, for the next 90 days, beginning September the 20th. And Father, we'll end on December the 20th, right, Lord God, and we will go into a new year. 
December in, in uh, 2021 with great fervency for you will speak and you will you will speak loudly God concerning the nations we give you praise and we honor you oh God we thank you in Jesus name can y'all say amen? amen give the Lord a hand praise this morning thank you Lord glory to God